Hello, Year 13s. Thanks for coming, guys. Nice to see you all. Right, okay, so Making Buffers Part 2. It's nice to see everyone on the chat. Thanks very much for posting, guys. It is appreciated. Right, I'm going to share my screen and let's crack on. Let's get straight into this. Oh, 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 Okay, get rid of my face because you're going to look at the ceiling. Right. Okay, so last lesson, it's just nice to review last lesson. We began the process of understanding buffers. So this was lesson 10. So uh, what we did was these were the learning objectives. We were introducing buffers. So no, a buffer is a mixture of weak acid or base and it's salt. So we, yeah, so that was a clear bit of understanding. We discussed, discussed what the definition of a buffer was. We then said, understand how a buffer functions using equations. That equilibrium equation that's established uh, between the weak acid and its salt, or weak base and its salt. Know both methods of making, and this is where we left off. I got down to the uses, I tacked that on at the end, but we're into method number two. Okay, so today's lesson. Today's lesson, nice, nice and easy. So... We, we began the process of chatting about buffers being made from a weak acid on their salt or a weak base and its salt. And we talked, to, and we kind of looked at these thought experiments and we were like, I'm gonna take this and this and mix them together. But there is a second method. So, okay, first thing I'd like to do, first thing I'd like to do, uh, so we can do making buffers. Oop, let's make that a bit clearer. Making buffers. There are two choices when it comes to making buffers. You can either do um, mix mix a weak acid, a weak acid, and its salt, and its salt ownership. Its salt. So the example which we talked about, and it's good to give the examples. E.g would be something like ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid, and I'm gonna mix it with sodium ethanoate. Yeah, that was, that was the, that's the most, most common example given by teachers. We then talked about that being an acidic buffer, having a pH of around about 4.5. And then just to give the EG number two of the weak base would be something like methyl amine, methyl amine, plus methyl ammonium chloride. That's a lot That's a lot trickier, and students find that a lot more, much more difficult. I'm actually gonna write down the organic name. Yeah, methylamine. Now, by the way, this is actually the old name. The new name is methanamine. Ooh, I hate that. I, I really, really hate the fact that they, they've changed a family of mine that I'd learned. Uh, and then this is going to be methan ammonium I still prefer to use the old one for this one. Methyl, methyl ammonium, ammonium chloride. So it's nice to kind of, we, we need to make sure that we can quote them from the weak, weak base perspective. And amines are very common because it definitely stretches students. This here is stretching you guys up to the higher levels at A2. Yeah, this is pushing you to an A, B level. Okay, so what's the second option? The second option is to mix, is to mix a weak acid, a weak acid uh, and strong base. But there's a clause here. Weak acid must, 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 weak acid. Acid must, capitalize, change my color, must be in excess, be, must be in excess. And this is where it links to our graphs in excess. Now, the reason why this second method is worthwhile spending a lesson to do is because you realize that it's actually, it gains more steps than the previous one. Yeah, in this one, in this particular scenario with the weak acid and its salt, it's usually only a change in concentration that um, that causes any level of difficulty. But with this one, we're gonna have to run a neutralization first. 
So let's now move over to here. Okay, underline. Right. So uh, weak acid, weak acid, excess, and strong base. Okay, so what we need to do is, now the roadmap still applies. I always describe acid base by the use of roadmaps. And the most important roadmap that we can ever talk about, yeah, the roadmap. Oh, hell. Uh, roadmap is the KA expression. And the KA expression, I, I tend to alter it slightly. Yeah, I tend to alter it slightly. Uh, weak acid to to do it for buffers so this is my roadmap now we know that this is not a good expression this is just purely me taking this uh, and adapting it to help with the understanding of buffers we know that what's going to happen is that we are going to have a reservoir reservoir a reservoir of weak acid this is going to neutralize the addition of bases and a reservoir of salt, which is going to neutralize any acids that are added. So this is the roadmap for the buffer. So let's now enter into a question. Let's look at this from a question perspective. Question number one, these are all thought experiments. So what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna say Emma adds, Emma, adds um, 150 centimeters cubed of 0 0.2 moles per dm cubed ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid to 75 centimeters cubed of 0 0.2 moles per dm cubed sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. They will then give you the Ka value. So then say Ka equals 1.7 times 10 to the minus five for ethanoic acid. And they will say calculate, calculate pH of buffer. Now, can I just say, by the way, that these questions come in a variety of forms and different levels. And one of the things that students often uh, get stuck on is when they don't use the word buffer in the solution. You need to have practiced these questions to the point where you know if it's a buffer or not. And the reason why I know this is a buffer, the concentration of the acid and base has, uh, is the same. Yeah. But the volume is very different, and there is loads more weak acid. The weak acid is therefore in excess. This will result in a buffer. Okay, so let's tackle it. So, answer. I'm going to try and zoom out to keep the question on screen. Answer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame this one. I'm going to show, I'm going to give you guys, uh, I'm just going to run through it myself. And you guys can make the observations. You guys can come up with any questions that you have for me. And I'm, I'm doing this a little bit as, you know, look at the process I'm running. And you guys can then copy that process. Uh, and then, of course, as things change, it, it will make it more challenging and give you questions that you can then tackle on your own. So I'd like you to watch this one from start to end. If you feel confident enough that you would like to give this a try, then please pause the video now and you may have a go. If you feel like you want the you want me to talk you through the process, get through the first one, then please stick with me. Okay, so step number one. Step number one, I've got to do the weak acid. So number one, moles of weak acid. I'm just gonna put, I'll, I'll actually put ethanoic. It's good to do so. Moles of ethanoic acid. So I'm going to go number of moles equals C times V over a thousand because I'm in centimeters cubed. Number of moles is 0 0.2 times by 150 over 1000. Right. Spit out my answer. Calculator on 0 0.2. And my calculator is still the sticky one. So I'm doing my best 
just to make sure I'm hitting all the buttons correctly. 0.03 moles. Right, step number two, moles of strong base. Moles of strong base, sodium hydroxide. So number of moles, C times V over a thousand. Now if I'd added solid, if I'd added solid, solid sodium hydroxide, then I would have used grams over rams. Yeah, if I'd used a gas and I bubbled the gas through, then I probably would have used C, um, PV equals NRT. But in this case, it's also a solution. So number of moles equals 0 0.2. The concentration was the same. I used half the volume of strong base, and I'm therefore going to end up with half the number of moles of base. Next, number three, moles in excess. Moles in excess. Now, at this point, I'm going to write an equation. Yeah, I'm going to write an equation just to check that it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and it is. So that makes things a whole lot easier. Yeah, whenever they throw in a, a die, um, you know, if they, they throw in a base uh, like you know, potassium, uh, calcium hydroxide, then all of a sudden things change a bit. And it's something to bear that in mind. But this is a one-to-one. -one. So just to highlight that, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. This makes things easier. So I can simply subtract the smaller from the larger. So I've now got 0. I'm going to shrink my pen. So I'm going to now do 0 0.03 minus 0 0.015. So I've got, now that's interesting. I've got the same number of moles. The leftover acid is the same as the salt moles, um, the same as the base moles. Now, the next clear thing here, which is the really important leap of faith. Yeah. So the moles of base we had, let's write this down as our numbers underneath this. I had 0 0.03 moles of this guy, yeah? And I had 0 0.015 moles of this guy. Now, what we realize is that the moles of the, of the base are going to become the moles of the salt. Now, some students say, why is it not the moles of the acid? The reason being is the moles of acid are in excess, so we can't use 0.03. So that's going to become 0 0.015 moles in excess, in excess, but I've now got, I've now got that many moles of salt. Is this okay with everybody? So this is the leap of faith. So in the previous lesson, that roadmap there could be used directly. However, in this scenario, the salt moles the moles of salt come from the moles, yeah, um, salt moles. I'm just going to go a little, I'm going to shrink that down a bit. Moles of salt are conjugate base. Moles of salt are formed from strong base moles because it's fully, fully neutralized. So... I then get myself into the habit of going, they become the salt. Yeah, it's something that you need to be really, really careful with. And that base understanding, <laughs> just base under, <laughs> base understanding, like, I'm gonna stop. Um, so that becomes the salt. Okay, right, at this point, we need to be super careful because it's, it's very easy to forget that this roadmap yeah, square brackets. Yeah, don't forget, the square brackets means concentration. We must convert back to it. Yeah, square brackets means concentration. So don't forget to convert back. So now that I've got moles of excess acid and moles of salt, I can now convert each one of them. So number of moles, yep. So, by the way, this is step number four. So, step number, sorry, I've gone off piece. Hang on, there we go. Step number four. If I'd have made that, I've made that thicker than the previous one. I'm going to shrink that back down again. There we go. Step number four, concentration. Conk, dot, dot, dot. So, I've got 0 0.015 moles, moles of weak acid, and what's now the total volume? That's a key part that students forget. 
Got to remember I've changed the volume. I've changed it now to 150 plus 75. Yeah, I've gone to 225. So number of moles equals C times V over 1,000. I always write that equation down whenever I do any moles. Now I re re rearrange. 1,000 times by N over V will give me C. Okay, let's input my data. So 1,000 multiplied by the moles of 0 0.015 over the volume of 225 is going to give me 1,000 multiplied by 0 0.015 equals divided by 225. I'm doing it on my calculator in bits because it's sticky. I now have a concentration of 0 0.0667 moles per dm cubed. Now, what's interesting about this is, and I'm wondering if anybody's even spotted this yet. Yeah, that's the moles of the weak, the concentration now of the weak acid. And I'll put, um, I'll put conch of weak acid excess, right? What you realize is that it's the same thing, 1,000 times by the, now we're going to do conch, this is now conch of salt, concentration of salt. Now I have the same moles, 1,000 times by 0 0.015 over the same total volume. So the answer is the same, moles per dm cubed. Right now, I can insert these into my roadmap. Yeah, the roadmap is reminding you, yeah, that the salt has come from the base, the square brackets are concentration, and we just insert the people then afterwards in order to get our concentration of H+. So, step number five. Yeah, I'm sorry about the fire of the air raid siren. I live right next door to a golf course, and they're telling them that they can go back onto the golf course, because at the minute it was been raining and they were hiding underneath shelters. So, Ka equals, now I've already written the one above, so I'm gonna reorganize immediately. So, Ka multiplied by the concentration of my weak acid excess, yeah? divided by, yeah, divided by the concentration of the salt, which comes from the base, is going to give me H+. plus. Let's just check that. I always like to see the equation, so I've moved the weak acid over and moved the salt down. It's very reasonable. Okay, sorry, I've lost my thing. There it is. Okay, so the great thing is, there's our salt, there's our weak acid, they're going to cancel out. So Ka equals the weak acid of 0 point, oh, no, no, no. Ka, which let's insert all my numbers now at this point. Yes, yeah, step six. Uh, no, it's actually not, it's a continuation of step five. So 1.7 times 10 to the minus five multiplied by 0 0.0667 all over 0 0.0667. We know that these guys are going to cancel out to give me H plus because it's half neutralization that I've given you. But it's nice actually to run it in its entirety. I've, I shouldn't have done it. I, I, I didn't really think through the question well enough, but it's nice to see that this happens. 1.7, now I'm gonna predict, predict pH 4.5. So 1.7 exponential minus five, multiplied by 0 0.0667, divided by 0 0.0667, right, I get the same number, 1.7 times 10 to the minus five. So I can now say, H plus concentration is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 minus log answer and I will get minus log answer and I get 4.77 pH 4.77 yes okay uh, can I please have a quick show of people on the chat because I've realized that my calculator is being a proverbial nightmare can I have a quick uh, shout out on the class if everybody got the same answer. Dat, did you get my answer? Can you get my answer? Let's see who's first to comment. Donna did. That's a good sign. Kayun, yeah, fantastic. Right. Let's make the question a little bit harder, shall we? Let's make the question a bit harder. So it's nice to come across that half neutralization. 
There's real value in mentioning that. Now I'm going to avoid that entirely. See, Dan might have even noticed and just realized he could have shortcutted it. But next question, you're definitely not going to be able to. I'm trying to get you guys into good habits. Question number two. <clears throat> Donna, Donna adds, Donna adds um, uh, 100 centimeters cubed of 0 0.1 moles per dm cubed, moles per dm cubed of sodium hydroxide. Uh, speed up for me of NaOH to 500 centimeters cubed of 0 0.18 moles per dm cubed ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid. Ka value 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. <laughs> Pitch, question mark. There we go. Right, guys. Run it. I got a quadratic because I assumed some of the remaining ethanoic acid will dissociate. Oh, God. Assumption that. So you realize how useless your maths is there, Dad, because it's not needed. We don't need to run a quadratic for this. I love what you've done, but you realize the difference it makes is negligible. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, brilliant. Oh. Right. So, guys, pause the video. Let's run it. Okay. If you want to watch the second one, please do. Okay. Answer. Stage number one. Let's write out our roadmap. Yeah, stage number one, roadmap. K-A, I'm gonna make my pen a bit thicker. I'm getting larger and larger in my text, it's not good. K-A equals, and we're doing a buffer. I haven't said it's a buffer in the question, but we realize that I've got a greater volume of the weak acid than the, than the base and a higher concentration. This is definitely a buffer. The weak acid is in excess. So I'm gonna write down my roadmap. Uh, weak acid excess. And then we say, but that comes from the base. Yeah, the base. So we just ignore the remaining ethanoic acid. Yes, you do, Ria. Yes, you certainly do. You realize it, it, can I just point out, by the way, that that particular point that we just ignore the remaining ethanoic acid. Well, in reality, Ria, uh, and that, that you you do, you, it's not just an assumption. There is actually a reason for the ignoring, because what they're saying is, just to explain it to those people who don't understand what's being said, in the equation, yeah, in the equation, what we're realizing is that, here, here is what they're thinking. Got this in their heads. It's interesting that you've, you've made that connection. They've gone, right, I know that I've got lots of this and I've got lots of this. And then they're saying, well, I can work out the difference in concentration of those two and I can input those into here. But I would also realize that the weak acid is going to continue to dissociate. So I could actually link this to the, to the, to the actual to the actual Ka expression that we're using for the weak acid. Yeah, I shouldn't have to do HA. Um, now, the reason why this is not needed and that, why this is important for you to realize this isn't correct, is because any weak acid that is left over, yeah, that produces H plus in the dissociation would be mopped up by the huge reservoir um, of, of conjugate base in the resulting solution. So even, even if you do have, even though we do get continued dissociation of the weak acid because it's in excess, it quite literally doesn't matter because it just gets mopped up by the equilibrium. Yeah, we know that we're establishing an equilibrium between these two. And in reality, any, any separate dissociation of this, yeah, any separate dissociation is simply going to drive that equilibrium 
back towards the weak asset. Yeah, that's simply going to be used in that particular equation. So you'll you will establish an equilibrium, and we do not need to consider the continued disassociation, the dissociation of the weak asset that's in excess. Does that make sense, Dat Rear? Can I just have a quick um, a quick comment on the chat as to whether or not you feel that explains enough of what I'm talking about? Because that's a difficult concept, that. And, and it's something which most students don't even realize is even possible. So it's nice that you guys are taking that to the next level. It's really nice. Cool. Thanks, Dat. I'm going to get rid of all that now. Okay. So once again, the ratio is one to one. Going to make this a bit trickier in a minute. So going to... Yeah, it's a one-to-one, -one. that's good. Okay, step number one, switch back to red. So we're gonna go weak acid, weak acid moles. Number of moles is C times V over a thousand, input my data, number of moles is for the weak base, uh, C 0.18 multiplied by 500, all over a thousand, run it through my calculator, 0.18 multiplied by 500 divided by a thousand. Go. So I end up with 0.09 moles. First mark gained. Second, strong base moles. Right, so number of moles equals, I don't need to write the equation down again, it's already there, save myself the time. Concentration is 0.1 times by a hundred all over a thousand, same as dividing it by 10. Number of moles, 0.1 multiplied by 100 divided by a thousand. I know everyone's sitting there going, oh, why are you doing it on a calculator? You don't need to, that's where I'll annoy that to death. I just prefer to have a routine. Yeah, so, oh, so it dissociates, but the equilibrium will reverse it. And if I'm not, if I'm not too confused. Yeah, that's correct, did anyone else get 3.87? Oh, oh, Donna, did you forget to convert to concentration? Be interesting to see if you can figure out, Donna, where you went wrong. Oh, oh, have you already finished the next question, Donna? Oh, uh, oh, uh, fine. Look at you guys. Look at me. I can do it super fast now. <laughs> Excess weak acid. I'm not trying to do it with pace. Yeah, so I'm going to go 0 0.09 minus 0 0.01 equals 0 0.08. So now I can highlight this is going nice. This one is going to become my base. There's my salt. This one's going to be the leftover. That's moles, though. Ah, I gotta be careful. Yeah, it's just nice to mention that it's going to be that's moles. Right now we need to convert to concentration. So conch of weak acid excess is going to be uh, number of moles times a thousand. I've already got the equation up here. Times a thousand, bring the thousand up. Yeah, bring the V down over V equals C. Okay, so I've got 0 0.08 moles times a thousand. What is the new total volume? How much did she, she is 600. 600, that's an easy step to miss. So 0 0.08 multiplied by 1,000 divided by 600 gives me 0 0.133 moles per dm cubed. I like it. Next, conch of salt. The base becomes the salt. So 0 0.01 multiplied by 1,000 all over the new total volume of 600. 0.01 times 1,000, sticky button, divided by 600, gives me 0.0167 moles per dm cubed. Right, into my Ka. Let's reorganize. Ka multiplied, I'm actually going to show the rearrangement. Yeah, H plus, salt, all over weak acid excess. Right, reorganize, bring that over. Ka times by weak acid concentration excess divided by the concentration of the salt is going to give me H plus. I love my roadmap. Right, input my numbers. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by the weak acid concentration of 0 0.133 
all over the salt concentration of 0 0.0167 gives me H plus. 1.7 exponential minus 5. I'm hitting this calculator really quite hard now. Equals divided by 0 0.0167. Checking all my numbers are correct. I get 1.35 times 10 to the minus 4. And that's the H plus concentration. Be organized. Moles per dm cubed. Right, minus log, minus log, answer, minus log, answer, pH, 3, 3.87. Whoop, whoop, done with that, well done, loving it, well done, I'm impressed, very impressed. There we go, are you ready for question number three, folks? <laughs> oh, question number three, okay. Q3, Q3, that, that adds one gram of sodium hydro, of, let's, let's do something else, of, oh, got to be careful here, of lithium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide to, now this is where I've got to be really careful, uh, give me one sec. Okay, adds it to 200 centimeters cubed of, mm, of, um, one, uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 moles per dm cubed of, uh, should, we, should we mix it up? Should we mix it up? Problem is if I mix it up, I'm gonna have to look up a K value of methanoic acid. Methanoic acid. Ka, I believe 1.4 times 10 to the minus five, but let's check. I may be wrong, I might be wrong. I may be wrong. Methanoic. It's Christmas, come on. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, I'm way out. Way out. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. There's the point 0.4 I got. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. I like it. Okay, guys. pH, please. pH of buffer. Nice one. Right. Guys, pause the video and go okay so what i'm going to attempt to do now is i'm going to attempt to do this all in a reasonable amount of space <laughs> so just to kind of fit it in and show that it can be done you know these these questions are long and you learn to adapt to fit the space you're given during exams and it's important to look at them from an exam space perspective as well so first step number one moles of weak acid, which is the ethanoic. So number of moles equals C times by V over a thousand. Therefore, moles equals C, 0 0.8 times by 200, all over 1,000. Gives me 0 0.8, nah, 0 0.8 multiplied by 200, divided by 1,000, gives me 0 0.16 moles, zero moles of weak acid. Next, number two, moles of base. Moles of lithium hydroxide. Number of moles is grams over rams. And I gave you one gram over, got to work out the relative molecular mass or formula mass because it's ionic. Lithium is 6.9. Add that to oxygen at 16.0 and hydrogen, which is 1.0. So that's going to need to be, there's going to be a mark for that in the exam, 6.9 plus 16 plus 1. So that total, there's a mark for this number. And if you forget to write it down, you will lose the mark, 23.9. So I'm going to divide 1 by 23.9. So 1 divided by answer equals, that's 0 0.0418 moles. Now, I, I made this question up. There was a chance, because I don't know my relative molecular masses of 
compounds off the top of my head, and I can't run one over 24 in my head anyway that quickly, means that there was a chance this may not have resulted in a buffer. But it turns out it does. The weak acid is in, is in excess. And that's the point, isn't it? That is definitely in excess. So what that means is this will result in a buffer solution being formed. This is in excess. So what we now need to do on the next step, number three. So 0 0.160 minus 0 0.0418. So 0 0.160 minus 0 0.0418 equals. I have 0 0.1182 moles of weak acid in excess. Okay, now I can go to concentration. I'm trying to keep it all relatively compact and organized. Right now I'm dropping into the concentrations of both. I know that this one is going to result in my... <sighs> not dark enough is it this one is going to result in the formation of my salt okay so that's what we need to remember so next i go concentration of weak acid is going to be a uh, number of moles times a thousand yeah i'm just rearranging the, the equation I've already got it up there so i can see it over v will give me c so the moles of weak acid was 0 0.1182 times a thousand divided by the new total volume which was ah the give mid i will carry whoops sorry thanks for carrying okay um the volume remains the same because i've added a solid to it which means it's going to dissolve into the same final volume so I'm going to stick with the same 200. Isn't that interesting? No total volume needed. Times So 0 0.1182 times 1,000 divided by 200. The concentration is therefore, I won't put it in brackets, 0 0.591 moles per dm cubed. Okay, next. So what about the concentration of my bit of my salt? Same equation applies to so just input my numbers. 0 0.0418 times by a thousand over the total volume. Clear my calculator, 0 0.0418 multiplied by a thousand divided by 200, and I get a concentration of 0 0.209 moles per dm cubed. Right, input that into the Ka expression. Now, the Ka expression I haven't written down yet, it's my roadmap. So Ka equals H plus multiplied by the salt, because it's a buffer, all over the weak acid excess. Reorganize. Bring that up, bring that down. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by the weak acid in excess, which I've carefully labeled. Yeah, 0 0.591. You realize if you don't label all this stuff, guys, holy moly, do you end up in a reap mess. So 1.8 exponential minus 4 multiplied by 0 0.591 equals divided by 0 0.209 equals 5.09 times 10 to the minus 4. Right, minus log answer equals pH minus log answer, pH 3.3. We're done. <clears throat> Ivan hard carry. Uh, uh, I don't know what that means. Um, guys, did you get it? Give me a shout on the chat if you got it. If you got it. Come on. By the way, much more acidic. Way, way, way more acidic. Ah, oh, I'd love a coffee. That'd be really nice. <clears throat> Emma's like, boom, yes. Ivan, boom, yes. Bruh, yeah, nailed it. Check you guys out. Valo. I don't know what that means. Don has just put Valo. I don't know what that means. Um, but well done, guys. Yes. Uh, so why the question mark? Anyway. anyway, cool. Guys, super impressed. You're nailing this. You ready for your next one? <laughs> okay, let's keep going. 
Okay. Question. Uh, do the question blank. Question number four. Okay. So, uh, so is the reason why there's a buffer period with weak acid strong base because that makes that that reaction makes a buffer? Yes. Yes. Correct, Ria. Correct. Absolutely spot on. That is exactly why it does. I've suddenly realized it's five minutes before the end of the lesson. Guys, we're done. Wow. So we now have finished what I thought you were valvaloing. Uh, val I have no idea what's going on. Um, guys, both learning objectives have achieved. We have now, go back to playing your games, Julian. Oh, uh, yeah. So we have now finished both methods for making buffers. Next lesson, breaking buffers. Guys, I will see you all next lesson. Bring you back uh, onto my thing. Wow, my laptop. I, did, I forgot to put my fan on. Roast it, toast it. There we go. Guys, I hope you found it useful. Yeah. Uh, I understand these are tough, guys. It gets easier the more you do them. And there are a couple of questions which I will pick out. Uh, which require a little bit more of an understanding from a maths perspective. Ones where they do clever tricks, like they don't give you the numbers and they just tell you that the moles are equal and then you have to do horrible bits of maths to fix it. But um, we are done with making. Next lesson, breaking, we're done. So guys, we should be finishing. I am, I'm gonna do two things in this topic. These are the hardest calculations you're ever gonna have to do in A-level chemistry. These are Redox titrations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more lesson on breaking buffers, show you how to deal with that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one entire lesson focusing on those really challenging questions that we've had over the past few years. Um, for you guys to just develop that, mo that, that more, more uh, in-depth understanding of this concept. And then after that, guys, you know what's coming. It's going to be your endotomic test. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day. See you later.